The Wichita State Shockers have not played football since 1986. An all-time losing record, 0-3 in bowl games, 6-22 against fellow Kansas schools. This team was losing interest from the fans and became too much of a quote-unquote financial burden for the school to maintain. Fast forward to today, Cessna Stadium, home of the Shockers, is planned to be demolished after the 2024 track and field season. The revival of this program seemed improbable as ever until one man stepped in. I hired Ted Lasso to save Wichita State. State. Right here from Wichita, Kansas, he has proven experience building a winning culture like the AFC Richmond rebuild he just completed before this. He may not have Coach Beard on this journey, but he has the right group of guys to instill belief in. Thrusted right into a power conference, the Big 12, and having one of the worst rosters in college football. Let's meet some of Lasso's starting guys like quarterback David Ash, impact true freshman. A triage of receivers to throw to like Toledo transfer Larry Steffens. Corn Corn, a deep threat straight out of Iowa. And young Sean filling in as wide receiver three. Starting freshmen litter this team because when you're restarting a program, well, it's gonna be hot garbage. Maybe impact tight end Montel Pringle will bring the action. Another good transfer in linebacker Andrew Awe hoping to bring some shock and awe to the Shockers. But yeah, in the secondary, it's up to Rod dog to hold it down. Even with Ted Lasso at the helm, I expect a rough and tough year just looking at this schedule. So how do you rebuild a team that's just coming back to life? Well, the recruiting board here in prospect list will be our best friends throughout this entire journey. Looks like some of these three-star players are interested in playing in a power conference and they're willing to take a chance on Ted Lasso. If they have any idea on what he was able to do for AFC Richmond, they know it's a good idea to play with a coach like this that develops his players. Ted Lasso with his prestige, I would expect somewhat of a primetime effect, right? When Dion came to Colorado, a flood of recruits came with him and one office is our first one. He saw Ted Lasso was coaching it. He said, say less, I'm here. Lasso might not have as many recruiting hours as he would like, but let me just tell you, he has a knack for recruiting. Only targeting a few top tier guys because we know realistically we're not much in the race, but Dion Barco, five-star gem, and Jesse Almodovar were two guys he just could not resist putting on the list. I mean, check this out. Five-star gem, 94 speed, 91 excel, 88 break tackle, 88 stiff arm. This man has badges out the wazoo. He would be an immediate day one contributor. A few four stars also on the list like Alex P, gem, 96 speed, 93 jump. And then of course, we can't forget the three-star gems, Greg Shaw, Eric Rivera, Kai Elias, James Rogan, and other guys we couldn't quite scout yet. All I'm trying to say is watch out for Wichita State. They have a guy that knows how to build a program. Promising results early on the recruiting front for Dion, moving up on Jesse, Sydney Wall, fighting it out for Alex P. But all in all, as you can see here, we have our way with a good amount of guys. Now let's get in a good routine now, week one against the Washington Huskies. We need to believe we are at the level of our competition and can compete with anyone. When in doubt, it never hurts to have some good options here in the uniform department. We got gold, gray, the away, 1970 throwback as well and the classic shocker logo when we're at home but for today we'll just start off with the away uni because you look good, you play good, you feel good. Didn't feel good converting that fourth down. This is the second time, but clearly Washington's not feeling danger going for it again on fourth down, and we'll show them why that's a problem. You did it to us one time, you're not gonna do it again. The Huskies, man, this stadium is rocking. One of the toughest places to play. We'll dump it out to Campbell Jr. for a first down. And don't look now, true freshman Ash, number 13, has led his team right down into the red zone. Gonna get the running back in motion and lob one up to the tight end. Honestly, there are so many growing pains for taking a program and putting them back in to the FBS after a 30 year absence, but young Sean says, you know what? Maybe receiving is not going to be an issue this year. Let's just talk about some of the problems real quick. I mean, inexperience is the first one that's glaring to me. Some transfers like awe here, hoping to shed some wisdom onto this group of guys somehow tied up against Washington in this one, which is great to see. I just already know that offensive line, for example, is going to get dominated more often than not in many big games. I keep looking to my left, the star receiver Stevens. That's that is the transfer from Toledo. Maybe he'll get some step on the DB, but he looks like he's seriously jogging out here. That's not cool. We don't jog on my field and we do go for it on fourth downs. A snap, the play, blown up turnover. It was close in this one. And truthfully, I thought we had a chance for maybe a minute, but that is as long as I thought we had. 
Washington put it on. As we talked about, it's all about belief. We're not going to give up at all, no matter the circumstance in the game. Even if we lose the game, we can prove we're a team that will be a force in the Big 12. Clearly, I misspoke when I said force. Let's just go with contender, someone that can make it interesting. Because in year one of the rebuild, there's clearly no way we're going to be competing off the rip are you kidding me with that touchdown deflected from the db right into steven's arms living like larry on this one he's bringing his experience from toledo look at the db deflected it right into his arms unbelievable here in week one we have a chance to get down the field and win ourselves a ball game ash is looking to hurry his team up to the line hit the open receiver this is crazy 17 seconds left I don't know who to go to, so we're just going to chuck one up to Pringle. 11 seconds and no timeouts. Ash might just need to throw one up to transfer receiver again and hope he can have another miraculous catch. This is it. Final play of the game. Going for the goal post. Miracles can happen. I believe. Do you believe? In zone. Not into anyone's hands. That's ball game. Huskies survive in Wichita State starting off 0-1. But I don't think our group is disheartened. After a loss to Washington, you just know we have to turn the page in our first ever home game back at Cessna Stadium for like, what, 30, 40 years? So let's go ahead and see if the Shockers can defend their home turf in this inaugural game. Getting our second look at Ash at the helm right off the DT's nose. Try number two. We got a step here. Corn's gonna hold it on. Looks like Corn's open again across the middle. Takes a block there. Makes a nifty move. Makes another man miss. Corn is on his way. At midfield on the Shocker logo. Gonna dump it right back to the running back again. Air raid type offense out here. It's gonna pay dividends as we launch one up to young Sean. What a ball. Now third and goal. Looks like on the drag. It's more looking for a whole lot more. Six. Fourth down. Texas Tech going for it right across the middle. He's got the little dink and dunk. Slowly getting out of hand. It's 17 to seven and what was that i have to look back at the animation i clicked that receiver a long time ago that was a load of barnacles now we're back 24 to 7 getting slammed on the line just need to let anything fly we'll go across the middle pringle could not hang in i get a sense i know where this game is headed in the inaugural homestand i mean check out the score check out this defensive line clawing back into this one in the second half we need to ensure we get some points heck it's already fourth down here we need a big one stevens there we go transfer lead the way 21 looks like he's got a step young sean got outran by the db let's go ahead and give them another chance right through the drag off the helmet turnover fourth and 34 that's more like it never back down never what never give up in this case we did give up 52 to 23 texas tech steamrolls us on the home turf ted lasso is not happy about it but we're just gonna have to get back to the drawing board despite an zero and two start there is some serious excitement around the shockers i mean barkow and alma devar surging into first place as well as wall pete duck shaw pretty much everyone that we're targeting right now this is good to see the first guy to verbally come out and say they're gonna play for ted lasso next season it's james rogan jim center kai elias also wanted to get in on the action a gem tight end and we're making moves across the board it cannot be understated how important it is when you're reviving a program to bring in a good coaching staff ted lasso is going to do so much for this program when it's all said and done i mean i'm not joking here we have the lead on three five stars and if somehow some way we walk away with all three of them, I'm going to be mind blown. In the meantime, you can keep tallying up the three-star gems. That is two more, in fact, that will be playing up to a four-star level. Ain't no way. Sydney Wall was about it. Five-star right end. My man said, enough games played. I know the coach I want to play for. I've still seen some conflicting reports, but I'm going to go ahead and act like stacking points is still beneficial. As you see in the action summary, send the house, DM the player offered scholarship all have three separate impacts i'm honestly getting confused if these actually stack but heck why not send it with the points we just freed up i'm gonna go ahead and scout out the rest of our prospects to see if any three stars are worth it first couple guys not so much but dorian evanson is a rack bow bust brink let's go maybe Dion hawker that's what i'm talking about 91 speed 90 acceleration 88 throw power this scrambling quarterback needs to be a priority and i'm not sure why we're locked out from a week seven visit instead i'll soft sell and send the house just so we can get a little bit more cushion hopefully here on tulsa with room for five more targets i'm on the four star panel here and yep man that patch actually kicked in there are far less guys 
that have not been given a scholarship, which is much more realistic if we're being honest. I mean, four stars should be getting plenty. As a team, after the beatdown against Texas Tech, we won against Georgia State lost a close one to Vandy, and now we're taking on number four, Kansas State in Manhattan, Kansas. For those that didn't know, I am a K-State alum, as you can tell by my helmet right there in my handy dandy backdrop. But for today, I am gonna have to play against them and hope that Wichita State can shock the world. Wearing the gray alternates, realistically, we're gonna have to hope for a lot against this number four team. One thing I've definitely noticed in almost every dynasty rebuild I play, Kansas State springs out of the gates hot, quickly becoming a team that is competitive enough for the national championship. I do admit the Cats are a good team, so it's gonna take an awful lot to get through them on our way to the national championship. One of Ted Lasso's personal challenges in this rebuild is to have a winning record against Kansas schools when it's all said and done because remember they had a terrible record when they existed back in the day so keep that in mind as we go through the rebuild but you can probably already tally a mark in the defeat column down 27 to 0. the k-state wildcats sure know how to deliver a beat down especially on their home turf third quarter shut out we're not taking no field goal we're gonna go for the end zone it's six or nothing thanks to young sean's sure hands here we can hand it off and hope to hit the corner now on fourth down ash taking it into his own hands here scrambling and out to the right gonna dump it to Campbell Jr. touchdown shockers the only source of excitement for this team backup quarterback sweet is in the game now and he's gonna throw an errant ball safe to say this team is absolutely cooked for year one of the rebuild with the final seconds winding down let's see if sweet can go ahead and deliver a touchdown not even big 12 is gonna be a test we can say has DJ Giddens holy 219 yards, two touchdowns. In a sudden heartbreaking turn of events, we lost Jesse to Texas and Alex Pete to SMU. We had the lead, I thought, especially good cushion here with Alex. Losing a five-star gem running back is heartbreaking, but at least Dion here, five-star safety will be the cornerstone of the secondary. Unless something heartbreaking happens, I think we got him on lock. After taking on BYU with a couple of visits, we can welcome in Vince Keough. And there he is out of Phoenix, Arizona, Dion Barkow, bringing and Ted Lasso is seriously a luxury, even with this team going one and five. The only real wins we're getting this season are the commits that are starting to funnel in because we finally decided to give the fans an awe-inspiring performance against TCU. With one game to go, we went three and eight. That's right, went on a massive losing streak before winning one against Wyoming and then squeaking another one out here against TCU. We knew fellow in-state rival Kansas State was gonna give us a handful. Avery Johnson proved it was with the Heisman campaign. Losing the final week against UCF on a saddening note, 56-14. The Shockers turned their attention to early signing day with the 16th best class in the nation, two five stars, two four stars, 19 three stars. That's good enough to be best here in the Big 12, which is already competitive with a lot of top tier classes. Not bad for a year one impact from Ted Lasso. Dion Barkow and Sidney Wall are gonna be day one defensive upgrades. And then you definitely can't forget the fact there are a ton of three-star gem players that will have good dev traits, good overalls. I'm excited to see what they can do. Every player is a necessary piece to get us right here to the college football playoff. Kansas State dropped it to Georgia in the final game, which is heartbreaking for the Wildcats. I see Boise State, Colorado, Jacksonville State, a few other interesting teams that made it. Three quarterbacks got cracks at the starting job and none of them impressed. Defense was practically non-existent with our leading sack guy, two and a half leading interception guy too. This is troublesome for Ted Lasso, especially in the secondary. Rod Dog and CJ Kling Scales, two of our better corners, are on the transfer portal, and there's nothing we can do to convince them. A lot of transfers are interested in us, so that is good news. It's just a matter of sorting through and seeing if we're interested in any of them. I'll definitely start off with Ryan Yates here from UTEP, a good looking safety, and then why not go ahead and add Corbin Hendricks here, a deep threat from Arizona State. Give him the scholarship, give him the points, and then let's sit back and see See if Lasso can work his magic. Oh my goodness, I just scouted out Hendricks and now I see exactly why Lasso wanted him. 99 speed, 97 acceleration, six foot three. There is no chance I let Georgia Southern or Arkansas State get this guy. I might have been blind to this before, but I'm looking in the bottom right and I can see dev trait for some of our guys already committed, like elite Dion Barkow. Sydney Wall is just normal development, which is a bust. Sorting through the list, I see a three-star star. Some guys still hidden and then 
other guys like Jordan Spillman, elite, ready to come and make a difference. Lasso made a quick pivot and went and snagged Tiger Bachmeyer out of the transfer portal. We just need to compete against San Jose. Might be related to Hank Bachmeyer, an ex-Boise State quarterback. Let's see if his brother can provide immediate help here in the Big 12. Some of the best news yet though, Ryan Yates and Corbin Hendricks, the two main guys we were going after have committed. Throw in Tatum from Hawaii and we're looking good. We saw him, we wanted him, we got him. It's Tiger time. At national signing date, unfortunately, we fell back a little bit as Colorado took the lead. Still 25th in the nation, nothing to scoff at. Athletes like Matthew Bags are extremely versatile. I mean, look at them playing above projected at so many defensive spots. I think one of our most pressing needs is cornerbacks. Let's throw them there. Training results made things a lot more complicated. Yes, we're a better team, but there's a four-way battle for quarterback. And you know what? I should say five-way. A freshman is 73 overall. He might just get the job. In general, no one really blowing up. Except in the receiving room, Corn Corn had a big offseason. And then Rayshon Dobbs, a freshman that was at the bottom of the depth chart, put in the work. He's an 80 overall with 97 speed. Couple him with the transfer 99 speed. That is a punch. In fact, the spring game made it a no-brainer for Ted Lasso. He's going to go with Juan Office. Only normal development trait, but at least in the interim with 89 speed and 95 throw power, he is the best quarterback on this roster by attribute. New running back, Deion Hawker, a star 99 speed Hendrix is an impact receiver and his friend here Tiger Bachmeyer atop the receiver depth chart can't sleep on corn corn nor Rayshon Dobbs with his big second year leap I'm excited about some of our three-star finds like Spencer Lancaster Dustin Winton Vince Keough David Ferraro Jordan Spillman right outside linebacker with the elite dev Austin Payne and so many more of course just like freshman five-star elite Dion Barkow can't forget about the wall even though he is normal dev to make way for Barkow, we moved Carlos Caraway to starting cornerback number one. That ensures we got talent here across the board and we're locked and loaded for a good season. Before we jump into a season that starts with Indiana, we're going to need to rinse and repeat the recruiting process and I don't expect many more prospects as compared to last year. Yep, it's a similar looking board and that was to be expected as our prestige did not go up. This coaching staff saw success when they recruited five stars last year. So of course, we're going to add a few more this year, including a couple quarterbacks like Tim Nakamura. For now, one office should be a good start, but I'm really hoping we land a four or five star quarterback this season that could carry us into the future. Heck, maybe three star scrambling Brian Stevenson will be that guy. But in all seriousness here for year two, I don't expect a lot of improvement. We're going to have to do an awful lot of the same thing that we did in year one keep building this class of recruits and stockpile this team for the future. Zach Brink wants to be one of them. James LeCount out of Dallas, Texas is a generational five-star gem quarterback, 95 throw power. This would solve all our problems. Tim, on the other hand, is a bust, but he doesn't look too bad for what he can bring. Clearly, it's obvious we need to go for Geo Higgins, as well as Scott Bachman. Jadarius Wilds would be wilding on the secondary of opposing teams. Starting off year two against the Indiana Hoosiers, let's get into it. This team is not all that good in the Big Ten, probably one of the bottom tier teams. So this will be an interesting matchup in week one to see if we are quite ready to take a second year leap. I don't know if I'm too optimistic, but you already know Ted Lasso is. He doesn't let negativity get to him. One office at the helm and take a look. Dobbs, Bachmeyer, Hendricks, a fresh batch of dudes out here. We're going to let one fly. Dobbs can I get it one drive is all you need to get some points on the board and change up this ball game Pringle comes down with it let's hope for a year two leap out of this dude I forgot to mention we have a new running back too Hawker's going nowhere let's go ahead and run this screen type play called Randy dumping it out to Hendricks blowing up maybe this is what we should have been doing Dobbs and Hendricks are speedsters 99 speed that's what it looks like touchdown you are not gonna stop a man with those type of burners. I'm going to have to restrain myself from abusing that because even on Heisman difficulty, that is really effective stuff. Bachmeyer gets his too. First core, transfer number one. Score number two, transfer number two. The receiver's making a splash. That is the beauty after all of playing power four football. You might stink one season, but the very next, you could get a fresh batch of transfers to change the dynamic of this program. The defense still is going to need some improvement, but at least on the offensive side of things, we got some dudes. Hawker, take off and get 
out of here. Number 18. Ooh, baby, I love that. One office is starting to cook. Let's see if he can convert here on this big third down to the sideline. Good defense. Down by a touchdown. We just need seven points right here to tie it up. Second and goal right back pound in the rock it's all knotted up all these key players and transfers make this year to wichita state team feel so much different like i kid you not they feel good and play good bachmeyer over the middle good catch and run audibling hendrix on a streak there just in case why not bachmeyer comes down with it and what a glitchy touchdown was that man oh man bachmeyer just must be that good indiana hoosier fans are like what office dot over the middle there he is and he slips through three guys i mean in his defense that was a blown tackle all the way but interesting animation juan's gonna need to do it again because indiana has tied this thing up all of our guys are red hot and you know who is hot and can get you a lead in the blink of an eye number 19 Hendrix, burning star cornerback. We're seriously going blow for blow right now. Indiana responds. It's 42 apiece. We got a wide open hole up the middle here. Going to go over the middle. We found Hendrix slipping through. Steady drive. We're keeping things moving. Just staying in front here with Bachmeyer. Going to call an RPO zone arc here. Let's just hand it off to Hawker up the middle first down. Looking for some straightforward yards and catches Dobbs yes sir one office has got his team right in position to go the distance let's go ahead and call an RPO handoff it's blown up but that's okay two seconds left on the road we call the timeout it's a 34 yard chip shot for the win can he do it yes he can for those that never stopped believing shocker nation you are off to a 1-0 start and I lost connection to EA server so will that still stay bad news on the server front we did not get to keep that thriller of a game one off is six touchdowns 450 plus yards I guarantee you the sim is not going to give him the same treatment I did can confirm the result was not good so this is kind of bogus 0-1 instead of 1-0 33 31 indiana why does this keep happening we're locked out again from the quarterback of our dreams james lecount gem we were winning everything visit planned and then he said nah deal breaker i cannot believe it instead i'm turning my attention to guys like Corey menace maybe he can play some quarterback but nah he's much more of a receiver so we might be hosing the quarterback sweepstakes the crazy part is we were running away with this i'm still salty let's go ahead and face our neighbor the cu buffs ralphie running across the field see you in prime time ready to get it going one office is always about that action but as you can tell he's down quickly 14-0 cu's offense is proving to be a difficult task in this one as number 11 just has a convoy and blocks touchdown well i suppose they are number four in the nation for a reason when in doubt let's just call the verts and see if someone can go ahead and make some magic happen on the run here going back for it, it's hendrix that's what's up now we're working it back within the red zone great catch hendrix this is the perfect test honestly for wichita state as we have to prove we can hang no time like the present let's go ahead and get this fourth down conversion as he's getting hit there's Dobbs for the touchdown that's all we could really celebrate in this one 44 to 14 we got blown out and Ted Lasso man he's reeling he needs to turn this thing around and quick he's proven it before he can prove it again bang and just like that Corey menace time to be a menace in Wichita Kansas Lasso still cooking up some things I wish we were still in this recruiting battle for James because we would be going crazy on the board right now if we can't get our quarterback at least we got David the running back Geo Higgins jam right in and some other guys that will be key off the bench as promising as the season first started it did not finish that way three and nine for the shockers a couple close wins against southern miss baylor and texas tech the rest of the season was a wash the big 12 was once again ran through by our kansas rival the wildcats behind them the conference honestly fell off and looks up for grabs for a team like wichita state if they can continue to take steps forward shout out to our other kansas rival the jayhawks who went two and ten worst in the 
the Big 12. Max Brown out of Charlotte was cooking up something this year for Heisman. Just like once again this year, we were cooking up a decent class, two five stars, a four star, and a 22-3. In the Big 12, only TCU did better than us in Baylor, K-State, Arizona, right behind us also in the 20s. Ted Lasso really is believing in the process because it's a sad day losing Corbin Hendricks, our 99 speedster, some good young corners like Stovall and Bags, and once again, yep, nothing we can do to keep these guys in town. No receivers in the portal to replenish the troops we lost, but look at Aaron Flowers here. This guy from Oregon, if we can get our hands on him, will be a game changer. Let's also add the defensive tackle from Texas Tech, Bradley out of Tennessee, Nate Hugh out of Texas A&M, and why not Melvin Wagner from San Jose? All five of them down here on the board, gonna send them the house. We have extra points, so contact friends and family and do the same for all five targets. In week two, we uncovered one interest for the four star and its playing style so we can get him on a visit quick. And here we go, more pieces to the puzzle. We got our guys, all of them. Yep all of them now into the off season with training results in 83 overall maybe we can actually win more than three games key highlights here Dion hawker is up big time 88 overall dobbs continues to impress offensive line isaiah crowder making big moves sydney wall needs to be careful james rogan's right behind him linebackers keep taking a step in the right direction corners are the biggest opportunity as we keep having guys hit the portal into the start of year three a look at preseason all-americans arch manning but more importantly Importantly, no shockers. And I guess it's not a shocker to not see any of our guys on here. Any Big 12 all conference bids? Not even a second teamer. Wow. Definitely a lot to prove this season with the up and coming squad. We already know Dion Hawker and Rayshon Dobbs are having a good time with it. But what about our key new freshmen? For starters, three star Taylor Agramonte is a star and he's buried in the depth chart. So maybe he'll have some breakout off season. Because in the quarterback room, it's still Juan's office. We already saw Dion Hawker pop off, but what about 80 overall David Zimmerman? This five-star running back should provide a jolt to the running game. Corey Minnis is a star receiver, so I don't expect him to be buried in the depth chart for long. Defensive line is getting physical. Geo Higgins, welcome to the trenches. Another season, and it's back to the recruiting board. Our recruiting team, led by Lasso, has been working in overdrive this last season, and going into year three, more of the same. We gotta go get our guys. We'll take whatever five stars we can get, because we have been getting some decent luck if we get onto the board early. Four stars as well where we can find them. Definitely continuing the search for a long-term solution at quarterback. Now, as you will see here on the recruiting board, Ted Lasso has his way with a lot of recruits. He'll get some instant commits just because of the name alone. Just like our boy Doug Westbrook, defensive tackle. Let's hope he pans out. Jason Diaby here may be the solution. 94 throw power, 86 speed, gem four star, great accuracies. What's it gonna take to compete? John Boyman is our boy. Step by step, this club is coming together and let the games begin against Arizona before taking on a relatively usual slate of opponents. No Kansas opponents on this calendar. Here we go, pivotal year three starts against the Wildcats. It's a cloudy day here in Arizona. The Wildcats are ready to go. And so are the Shockers wearing all gold to signify the start of a golden era of Wichita State football. Building for years here behind the scene, it's time to take the next step. The ascent begins, but we gotta clean up our passing game. Quite simply ran out of room on that last pass attempt. It's not going to happen again. On fourth down, we send the running back in motion, get nailed before we could get it off. This U of A defense has come to play. I can't even get a clean ball. Just a matter of time before we break through. Down 3-0. Looks like the middle of the field is wide. Going to catch it in. It's dropped. Juan, I'm going to need a big game from you today, my friend. Over the middle to Young Jr. Sending everyone out and about. The tight end looks open, so maybe this ball will float right into him. Third and 17 in the pressure is too much. Fourth and 30. Coach wanted us to punt. Clearly out of field goal range. I thought it'd be better luck just taking a shot. And now that's kind of like a punt anyway. Held out of the end zone all game. That's going to change right here. First and goal. It's third and goal. Over the middle looks good. And now massive fourth and goal. I'm going to go to the corner. We got him. It's Evanson. Just a matter of time before the floodgates opened up here. Hawker has got a step. He is in there. Touchdown. Shockers taking the lead. Let's go, baby. Just needed to open this thing up. It's fourth and two. Arizona's getting desperate here in the fourth quarter. Handoff up the middle. He is snuffed out. No good. 
good. It's the plays just like that that are proving to be costly for this Arizona team. Two minutes in the game is on the line. All we gotta do is chew it out. So much for those plans. They have tied it up, so it's back to the attack for the win. Stepping up pocket collapsed one office has been under duress all night long let's see if we can hit the tight end there nope ted lasso believes in his crew gonna go for it on fourth down over the middle that did not pan out holding them to three we have to spring into action without any timeouts it is quite literally our final chance on the field looking for a guy like dobbs to just spring free since he is our fastest guy on the field and that comeback play by the DB is going to seal this one out. What a battle and comeback by Wichita State. But then the fourth quarter collapse, Wildcats win. The woes continue as a team, but at least Jason Dybee here, four-star gym quarterback, we're closing in. Army's got a visit first, then it's us, then Arkansas. Let's just hope we hang in there. And wow, this was a jump. Matthew Von Rosenberg, five-star receiver, has arrived. Coming with him, four-star gym, John Boyman. Yeah, boy. That's what I'm talking about. Exactly what we needed, a couple weapons, and now a gym quarterback that's going to join him. I think we have them all locked up. Up, nothing any other team can do and he's a really good one glad it worked out for us and i'm gonna continue to try to pull some strings here scheduling a couple more visits for some five stars and we should be pumping our way for a couple more recruiting wins like i said lasso got his guy and we need anything to distract this team from the horrible reality of a one in three star the recruiting front is one way but another way to get our mind off things is to honor the past with our throwback unis if you couldn't tell office is out with an injury so whimpers in for one of his first career starts let's hope for a good performance today hit the right receivers make the right calls this freshman only has normal development but he has the skill set and receiving room to be comparable let's go ahead and do this one for the three one we're bringing back wichita state football let's do it in a big way this is around the year where I expect a third year leap and hype to grow for the home fans. And this is what we're looking for, contribution from all parties out here. Just not that one, please. It's 21 to 10 in the blink of an eye. We're gonna need some help out here. Maybe guys like Dobbs will spring free. That thing hung way too far. I'm gonna need Wimper to step up here, but the defensive line is the only thing stepping up into our face. Better yet, I should be asking the offensive line to pick it up. I can't get anything off. Unfortunately, if we don't score here, I don't know how we're gonna score and win this ball game. There we go. Good move here by the receiver, but just sailed. Down here within the red zone, gonna dump it to Rivera. Good to see our running back tandem getting involved, and Hawker's just gonna take this thing to first and goal. Let's go ahead and just hit our tight end. Oh, pump fake. Didn't actually intend to do that, but we still step into it and deliver the touchdown. Never say never. It's a two touchdown deficit. We can score here and try to score again. It's definitely going to take some help here from our friends. It's a whole team effort after all. And this is it down within a touchdown. Here come the shockers trying to shock everyone. More importantly, I want to do this for the home fans, the ones that have been tried and true sticking with us. I think that's all the motivation Wimper needs because now he's gonna drop and find more wide open and watch out this team's on the move let's keep it moving across the middle we got our big tight end sandwiched instead we will go right back to him that is what i'm talking about rivera scrambling out to his left he's gonna step up into this one not usually scrambling but it worked here big time let's go seven baylor came down the field they scored three points we have about 30 seconds left and scratch that i don't even know where that db just came in and stole that thing it's over seriously just gonna remember this season as another heartbreaking close but not quite ready yet type b at least marquez wiley made the right decision so our quarterback for the future has two five-star receivers to dump it off to continuing to build a crispy line this is good news from marquez once in a blue moon we get a bright spot and here we go week nine against tcu brenton whimper 396 and four good enough for accolades but not good enough to beat number nine tcu one in seven here we are four games left wyoming ucf even uconn's ranked so these last two games 
games are going to be tough. Around this time, we replenish our board with some new prospects like Nicholas Hawkinson. Lighten up our board with some more three-star gems, Cole Hoke, one of them dudes. Got plenty more we got our eyes on too. I should mention that Oscar here is a three-star gem lefty quarterback, and it will be a good insurance bet if none of our other quarterbacks pan out. 95 throw power. Third straight year of below average results. It got much closer in the end. One possession games pulled one off against Texas Tech. The city of Wichita is ready to give Ted Lasso another chance in year four after they saw how they put it together here at the very end. It could have easily become a 5-6 win season. One year prove it contract for Ted Lasso. The fans are getting restless. They're tired of hearing, oh, it's coming. It's building. We're working there step by step. This year four needs to be a significant jump six wins minimum in the big 12 conference tcu who we almost upset went and won it 11 and 1 ucf right behind him but check this out man the big 12 cooled off a bit again which is a little odd this conference usually is dominant kansas state a seven and five off year somehow looks like we got the tiebreaker over ku for the team that got scored against the most 391 points against it is time to take the next step defense needs to elevate on offense Brenton Wimper actually stepped in for an injured one office and ran with it. 24 touchdowns, six ends, 2,200 yards. Not bad at all. Pretty happy with what I saw, especially from guys like Javon Moore, freshman tight end Evanson as well. And then we turn it over to the defensive side of things. James Rogan, KJ Hartley doing what I asked him to do. Step up the physicality. Takeaway still kind of hard to come by. A few more gem three-star recruits to round out the season. Christopher, senior quarterback at a Clemson, wins the Heisman. I have seen this man's name before so watch out for him early national signing day it looks like ted lasso's pulling out his best trick yet the 14th best class two five stars three four stars 17 three stars i really am excited for this group of guys i mean two top end receivers with essentially a five-star quarterback in jason then you tack in a bunch of three-star gems oscar is another very good 95 throw power quarterback and yeah i just can't get enough of this group of guys add some transfers here in a second and we should be golden a miracle run by florida atlantic knocking off two big 12 teams ucf tcu and then miami to get to oregon and lose it absolute bummer for the owls the best news we've gotten yet only four guys leaving for graduation this next season's about to go crazy and even better here jonathan gatson out of south alabama four star could become a shocker chad shakir to fresno state rico from colorado matthew from san jose and sure why not rodney tisdale jr out of troy jonathan gatson has platinum robber silver house call 88 speed 92 excel 95 change direction 87 zone 97 jump i must say i am a fan let's get it going not gonna lie this rodney tisdale guy doesn't look good 80 speed 86 throw power i have plenty of quarterbacks that do better and he's a junior so i'm sorry man get off the board there we go gatson ready to rob the hearts of wichita fans i remember when we brought in the menace menace just like it was yesterday man this dude's up to 97 with attribute boost he's gonna be an nfl caliber linebacker handful of 90 overall players up in here this is gonna make for a really good season again it's a massive cluster for qb1 the team looks full of winners if you ask me i see a ton of dudes taking their job seriously pumping high 80s 90s even with sydney wall cracking 90 there literally is no reason we have less than six wins i'm telling you right now oh how the tides turn our best quarterback is now our fifth best quarterback let's go ahead and tell whimper to transfer on out of here i'm telling you quarterback is not the problem anymore between six underclassmen one two three of these guys are gonna ball out a lot of hype and unrest surrounding this season so ted lasso is gonna have to prove something Dion Hawker should help him as our first all-team Big 12 bid. On the second team list, I'm surprised we got no one else. We might have some honorable mentions, but we can't tell. Let's go ahead and show them what we're made of against an FCS opponent in week one. Sam Houston week two, Kentucky, and then of course, Big 12 opponents with, look at this, Kansas State and KU, both Kansas rivals back to back weeks. Setting up the recruiting board for this year, we had access to only two five-star 
stars. They're both good. But the highlight for sure for me is the number of four star gems. That's three, four, five, six, seven. That's right, seven four star gems already on our board. We're gonna be trying to get each and every one of them over here. The year four crew just keeps getting better. Jason Impact Quarterback's one of those guys. Oscar, the backup I was telling you about, he is also a star. Marquez Wiley, our six foot five receiver. Impact, 81 overall off the rip. Moving his way on up, it's Matthew Von Rosenberg, 75 overall impact. James Augustine, a speedster star. Trayvon Lane holding down left tackle. Marquez Crisp holding the line together. Parker Woods doing his part on the right side of the line. John Boyman, impact linebacker. And man, all in all, I'm surprised by the development of some of our guys like Impact Zay Minnis. Don't have to be an elite dev to put up some insane numbers like this guy. Believe it or not, Ted Lasso has faith in his true freshman, Jason Diaby. Gonna move him in to the starting lineup and put him at number one. One, Office has backup duties, but Office and Brooks only have normal dev, which is why he wants to get to a guy like Jason. Even Taylor's gonna get promoted because he's a star. It's time to get a glimpse into the future and our best team yet, 87 overall, taken on the FCS Sharks. First drive, let's see Jason in action here. First pass, that thing is a bullet. What a seed. Now, 100%, I expect to see fireworks out here today wow deflected interception i was about to give a compliment whatever day we're about to have we need to keep it in context as once again it's the fcs sharks zimmerman walking it all in there's the five star running back finally making some plays making his name known five star or not it's hard to get yourself on the field when you have the all big 12 running back in the backfield and on the cross it's zimmerman again he is making a difference as a receiver today you can tell he means business going in to year number four diaby looking like the right quarterback for the job just padding it on it's a new leaf out here for wichita football the fans are in the stands everyone has high expectations for this unit why the heck not throw hawker out there as a receiver see if he can hold on to it essentially like we're running a scrimmage it's fourth and goal we don't care about the down come on good glances out here from the freshman but also a couple costly mistakes that i think need cleaned up one last drive here for the boys in black and gold this one turned into a blowout as we would hope persistently sending the rock up the middle three times in a row piece by piece make it four and five i know zimmerman you got it man that's trust in our team sweet sweet victory and it wasn't even close 56 14 now we're off on the right foot ted lasso has his team buzzing maybe we should have been scheduling easier opponents in the beginning of the year just to get warmed up just a couple weeks into the season major commit here in julius devi five star made his choice as the shockers continue to turn around their program julius made his voice loud and clear another set of unfortunate circumstances deandre body we desperately needed corners we were winning he's 97 speed seriously a phenom and we're not going to get him instead now i'm going to use the points to schedule Schedule visits on all of our gem four stars sending most of them to the week when we play KU hopefully we can get to Mike McNary in time because Duke is closing in already smashing it out of the park winning against Sam Houston handling Kentucky and beating Houston. We did lose by a touchdown to Baylor, but four and one is incredible. The next test is against four and one in-state rival, Kansas State. Back in Manhattan, this team is scary good. They're always pushing it for the national championship. So it's gonna be all hands on deck. This year too, they're cracking the toughness rank 25th. Bill Snyder Family Stadium is rocking. And I can imagine the attendance would be good with Wichita coming down. Just a few hours away, this one is close and personal. Let's launch it to Dobbs, hauling it in until the DB broke it up. Wow, that was a good play by Travis Farrell. Ted Lasso is aggressive. He doesn't have any regrets going for it. No good. Rattled all across the board here. Just going to go for it on fourth and 14. No, that was disappointing. We didn't get it by literally inches out here. And darn, they convert on fourth and inches. Falling insanely fast to 20 and zero. Kansas State, dude, I can just tell 
This team's going to give me nightmares. Like, going forward, this is going to single-handedly be the bane to our playoff run. Now third and 19, we're just going to hand it off and get stuffed. Clearly, we still have a lot more to prove as a shocker program. Hopefully, this doesn't send our team into shock and we lose the momentum that we had before this. Malachi McKinnon, nine rushing attempts, but he made him count. Thankfully, a couple four stars like Paris and Ezekiel are in. We could not handle Kansas State, but maybe better luck here against the Jayhawks. Lawrence, which attack? should make for some good football out here. Dobbs, a little spin cycle. It's been some good contribution across the board from this team, but Dobbs is single-handedly gonna put this team up 7-0. Jayhawks, slant, it's open, it's Dobbs. Cannot hang with the Wildcats. Jayhawks, will they be any different? So far, I like what I'm seeing, but man, that bull rush hit. 13-7 here, two-minute drill in the fourth. Our slant got lurked. They knew it was coming. And into the fourth quarter, they have the lead on us, and I just can't get anything going. Jayhawks defense really stepped it up here in the fourth quarter and second half in general. Fourth and five, we need to keep this drive alive at all costs. Maybe Young Jr., thank you. What a conversion in a tight situation. How about another? All the way into the red zone. I think Evanson would have had that. Again, more disruption on the front, which is funny to me because we have 90 overall and 80 overall linemen so what is the cause of all this in essence this right here is our last chance we need everything huge catch maybe a huge run right here will be the difference and there we go first and goal as you can tell i just audible to a play called shock that is perfect if you ask me for the shockers and i think i missed an option there evanson looked good too let's hurry up and call shock again strategically chewing some clock can't see the clock right now because of the menu bug but i think that has been enough time let's just call it scrambling back to our left gonna see if we can just step up and run there he goes jason in zone touchdown in the lead yes sir do a snow angel or turf angel as the shockers shock the jayhawks in the last drive that's a big time freshman making a big time play game on the line here final ticks in this one he's just gonna dump it to the running back who's gonna sprint ahead chew a lot of clock with him now we can man up play some big time prevent defense he has all day to throw it but that is the nature of the beast. Someone step in there, make a play. All good, harmless to the ground. And the shockers, come on now. Last drive, final seconds. All needed it in the end. It's a game of inches. Winning that KU game was a sign of good times ahead. Recruits like Oscar and Andre are in, further bolstering Ted Lasso's youth movement, but check out this run. Lost to Iowa State, but then beat ranked TCU beat Wyoming, UCF, and Texas Tech. One heck of a turnaround and honestly an up year in general for the Big 12, Cincinnati and Colorado, as well as TCU and Kansas State, six and two in the conference play. BYU's ranked our Shockers 14th in the nation and many other teams with a winning record or even record. With the crowded conference we're in, not good enough to make it into the bracket this year as Kansas State and Cincinnati will represent from the Big 12. With just one week later, since Cincinnati snagged the four seed, Kansas State the six seed. Check out my Boise State Broncos as well, 12th seed, okay. We should be in line for a good bowl game. Jason had a pretty good year for shocker quarterback standards, but honestly still not that great, which leads me to believe that the defense was the selling point. And oh yeah, initial glance here, Greg Kane, the freshman, 11 sacks. Sidney Wall, eight sacks going into his senior season. Seven and a half from Hartley, two ints from Zay Minnis, but no one else got in on the fun. Alex Barnes was slinging that thing around for Louisiana Tech as we get a berth for the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl against Toledo. And here we go, our first bowl game in Wichita State program history will sense being rejuvenated. This team is 0-3 in bowl games prior to the 1986 season. But look at the shocks, man, repping the Tony the Tiger bull patch. On paper here, we should be able to compete with the Toledo Rockets as young Sean catches this thing in stride heading past midfield. This slip screen is called Rhino, so let's go ahead and throw it off to Hawker. Our air raid playbook is full of fun slinging plays that stretch this field. Fourth and inches, let's let our running back pick it up for us, and we can keep this drive a lot. Frosted flakes on the field, scrambling out to our right, trying to flake on these rockets. Oh yeah, Evanson first and goal. And just like that, let's let Hawker go ahead and do the rest. Who was on that defensive tackle? That cannot fly anywhere you go. I don't care what team it is, what play, 
that's a touchdown right here. So we'll make up for it in a big way. This tight end out of Colorado is having a lot of fun right next door in Kansas. Sending Hawker in motion. Let's just dump it to him. He has some space in front, looking to put on a move. This play is up to our running backs. I'm either gonna dump it or hand it, and I chose to dump it around the corner, at least first and goal. Zimmerman got some size and frame on him up the middle, touchdown. Our first quarter was successful. I'm thinking the second quarter more of the same. Let's route these guys. So much for routing them. They've brought it back within a few scores here, and now this first down, is threatening us. Lasso and the boys took the pedal off the metal here going into the fourth quarter. It's all tied up. Need to secure the first bowl game in Wichita State history. Sun Bowl, Tony the Tiger, that was for you. Let's go, Dobbs. Got a running back open here in space, hitting Hawker on the run. Textbook, touchdown, the lead. And hey, now we did it. City of Wichita go crazy shocks are bringing home the title and we have our sights set on an even bigger year number five in the big 12 with ted lasso at the helm 10 and 3 is a smashing success not to mention our recruiting game once again on point looks like alabama pulled out this year's national championship 38 36 over north carolina and i can just tell this team is hungry to get here next year really don't want to lose geo higgins he was a star low chance and we couldn't keep him thank Thankfully, Lasso has built a defensive line that's like four deep at this position, though. In the NFL draft, we have sent shockers to the league. Zay Minnis, first round pick. And then in the third round, Isaiah Crowder was picked up. Rayshon Dobbs in the fourth round. Some great value across the board. In the transfer portal, I think we're just going to target Clint Derisaw as a good-looking backup quarterback out of Utah. Never hurts to have one of these. This is it. Year five is here. Prestige skyrocketed. Three and a half stars we have a roster that dreams are made of clearly 89 across the board and in season it should bump up another overall or two so get ready for 90 overall football it has been a quarterback carousel throughout the rebuild but there has never been a doubt about Dion hawker out of lawrence kansas 99 club shocker and if we can't win this year this team's in great hands next year as well i mean look at all of our guys starting to pay off wiley and von rosenberg five stars at the bottom of the receiver depth chart whereas guys like menace and wilds are getting crazy with it high 80s and 90s even at the tight end position i'm scared for who we go up against oh yeah did i mention 90 overall across the offensive line as well and with depth o-line meet a 90 overall plus d -line. Line. Linebackers looking good. Spillman up into the 90 range. Decent enough cornerbacks, safeties, and five-star Julius DeVee, who we just brought in, is a depth safety. Officially in the big leagues now with this prestige, I see a five-star Percy Snow, number one choice. He wants to be a shocker. Seeing such high-level guys want to come to the school is incredible. It's surely the Ted Lasso effect, no doubt about it. Real quick, let's see if we get any Insta commits. Not Percy Snow, unfortunately, but maybe Connor Carter. Carpenter. Josh Spears, Mike Figures, new. No. All right, no insta commits, but that's okay. Percy Snow is a bust anyway, but Platinum sidestep. Oof. You all thought Quinchon Judkins spin was bad. We'll get ready for Platinum Snow sidestepping it. Here is the calendar of destiny, a tough slate of opponents like always. But I believe the Shockers and first team All American Dion Hawker can go the distance. First team Big 12, of course, Hawker, but also throw in Sydney Wall. If that doesn't suit your fancy, on the second team, we got Greg Shaw. And and of course, can't forget about Dion Barkow. And at the end of year five, Ted Lasso did not disappoint with an encore performance. 10 and two, it looks like we're good enough to get in with the 10th seed, but look at all the big 12 teams. BYU, a two seed, Kansas State, eight seed, Oklahoma State, nine seed. There's four of us representing. Championship weekend shook up a few teams, but this is by far one of the most unique brackets I've seen. If you subtract Oregon and maybe Kansas State, every other team here is pretty unique. Western Michigan battling Oregon, winner faces Jacksonville State. Our matchup's also crazy. Wichita State versus Oklahoma State. Winner plays Michigan State. Then you got USC, Wisconsin, Kansas State, Nebraska. I love this slate of matchups. Our run through the Big 12 started out with a bang against FCS Midwest. Then close games against SMU, Colorado, and Maryland. 4-0. Then close ones against SMU, Colorado, Maryland, Iowa State. 
5-0 and on the season before dropping it to Oklahoma State. Good thing we have a revenge game on deck. Actually took out the Wildcats at Bill Snyder Family Stadium and beat Kansas 31-7. We swept our Kansas rivals. Squeaked one here against TCU, beat Wyoming, UCF, lost the last game of the season. Could have been in probably the Big 12 championship game if the Texas Tech did not defeat us. Who do we got a credit for the success? Ted Lasso, of course, but our players here, Jason and Juan were efficient, but not really eye-popping stats. Limiting turnovers was great. The run game was decent. Looks like Jadarius Wilds went wild, but again, Kane with 11 sacks, Wall with eight, Rogan with seven. Defense wins championships. A lot more turnovers this season. Three from Payne, three from Ratte. Hawkinson got in there. Same with David Ferraro. Charles Thurman claimed the Heisman and his teams right in this race. Rico got the 2029 Best Tight End Award. And who's ready for playoff football? Number eight versus number seven. A tough journey awaits, and it starts on the road against the Pokes. Here they come. Using Ted Lasso's believe catchphrase, Man, they're trying to take a play out of his book. We are not phased nor rattled in this matchup. We're just ready to ball. Always my favorite part of a rebuild when you just see every single player on the field. They're all guys that you brought in. Such a rewarding feeling to know that this team is stacked because of all the effort and hard work we put in over the years. Wichita State ninth in the nation here on the precipice of becoming a powerhouse. I don't think it's time to hit the panic button, but it's definitely time to hit the let's get to work button. As Oklahoma State defense, they're stepping up in a major way. This is not what the doctor ordered. A flurry of activity. That's right. It's 38-14 going into half. Lasso's guys never give up until the very last snap, even when odds are stacked. On the precipice of having to go into next season, trying for better luck. Really thought this could be the season of destiny, but you know what? This same squad is 10 times better next year because we're hardly losing anyone. A couple key seniors, yes, but we should be only getting better. Things really didn't go our way. 31 points for Oklahoma State in the second quarter. That is unreal. They knock us off. For such a creative bracket, it ended kind of predictably with Oregon making it again. Wisconsin did come out on top, so the Heisman winner was a huge piece of this success. Thankfully for us, I don't think we need to wait very long to get back into the action. A few more players to the NFL like Deion Hawker, first round pick, Sidney Wall, fifth rounder, and Rico, best tight end of the year award, seventh round flyer. Another loaded roster going into year six. It's deeper than ever at every position. I mean, just do you see the amount of high 80 overhauls there are. It's everywhere. Meaning we got no shortage of good players at every single position. Offensive line as stacked as ever. Defensive line in tip top shape, arguably better shape. Linebackers looking really good. And then corners are also taking the next step. That's still what confuses me about the tag they slap on the overall there, 86. By no means is this a worse team in year six. The margin for error in the big 12 is so little. Nine in three the following season, it got off to a problem promising start, even beating number two Kansas State. Then we somehow lose to Houston, Wyoming, and UCF in the same season. That's crazy. Three points ended up being the difference about what stopped us from getting into the bracket. The best part about building a powerhouse like Ted Lasso did here, he's recruited sustainably and even got this team looking better the next season. So you already know this roster is amped up and ready to go the distance this year. And I'm not leaving until we do it. Percy Snow knows what I'm talking about. Out. But this receiving room is absolutely lethal. 95, 91, 87, 86. Top end options everywhere you look. By far, this team is the most loaded. 90s literally across every position. Not even joking. Somehow dropped one to Temple. Looks like they're a good team now. We took it out on an FCS opponent. Utah, Kansas, ranked TCU, and Kansas State. Sweeping in-state Kansas rivals once again. Second half of the season looks like a bunch of winning teams, so it's no shame thing. But as it stands right now, we're projected to be a one seed. The second half of the season was even better. Check it out. Blowout against Wyoming, Iowa State, UCF, Oklahoma State before squeaking a one point victory out over Texas Tech, leading us as the number one seed in the nation to take on number seven TCU in the Big 12 championship. Win or lose, I feel like we're a guaranteed lock to get into the national championship bracket. Shockers want this one bad, of course, to secure a number one seed in the playoffs, but no sweat if things get a little tricky with the Horn Frogs as 
they're a good team they stole our quarterback back in the day that five star we really wanted well he went here with the national playoffs on deck we're gonna go ahead and sim this one see who can be crowned king of the big 12 so far wichita state up 28 to 10 this is the best season in school history that stadium has been sold out every single game ted lasso has really outdone himself look at this 38 27 champs congratulations to wichita state this turnaround really has been shocking the world jason 323 and five touchdowns a 91 percent completion heisman like season here i'm excited for our boys man they're gonna go in as a surefire one seed favorite to win it all great kane as he's done many times throughout his career player of the week putting up numbers on the offensive side of the ball no doubt jason was gonna get it and there you go player of the year 4,000 passing yards, 50 touchdowns to three ends, which is also good enough for 2031 Heisman winner. Naturally, give him the Johnny Unitas and best quarterback. He's nothing without his offensive line, and this center showed why he's the best. Hats off to Ted Lasso and the coaching staff. Despite our heroics, we got bumped down to the two seed in the playoffs, still had a bye, and now we get a take on USC. After getting bounced from the playoffs a couple seasons back, this is officially Ted Lasso's revenge to time to keep shocking teams one at a time sugar bowls first quickly down 10-0 i don't know what's up with that so let's give it to snow getting it to the one fourth and inches i'm pushing it right up the middle with percy snow and he's in that's what i'm talking about giving it back up to the man easy touchdown for percy we got depth everywhere with stars across the line wiley and menace as well as offensive line and quarterback of course never can forget about him menace is a menace oh man that is insane out here as charlton's just gonna finish this one off without a doubt we already knew usc was not backing down without giving their best effort best thing we can do is just keep the pressure going launching ball to menace let him be the menace on offense oh man come on now when you're the defense you gotta find a way to scheme up against the heisman winner that is no small task whatsoever he'll beat you any way he can and for the usc trojans i can't help but say i feel bad for you the shockers have an air raid that is not like anything else this nation's seen menace augustine long wiley say their names they all will cook you this has to be hands down one of the most dominant offenses i've played with in a rebuild for sure chance after chance they're calling it out of bounds but that's not gonna stop us because menace is open again the sugar bowl was never in doubt it belongs to the shockers and we're moving on to the next stage this makes me happy here in the fiesta bowl we have unlv who upset north carolina which yep that means with the trophy on the line it is the shockers it's the rebels winner goes on to the national championship game looking to a establish the rhythm here in the first quarter this is the opening drive paying homage to the team that became defunct this is how we show our gratitude i applaud UNLV for getting here but quite frankly this is gonna be a blowout if i had to guess this is domination percy snow over the top into the second quarter it is literally on the verge of becoming just that first and goal back to snow up and in i take back what i said regarding a blowout unlv sure has made it interesting and fun to play in in this interception at the red zone is gonna make it a whole lot more interesting buckle in up by three let's just be good stewards of the football here get some first downs call the game hats off to the rebels man they put up a fight and to me it does not look like they're done yet wreaking havoc on our guys it's four down we are literally close to our own end zone this is the ballsiest play lasso's ever called for all of wichita state it is on the line drag to wiley get the first down he stretches his big frame needed every last inch of the six foot five body first down we can kneel it out and here we go it's crunch time moving on to the national championship stage let's do it for wichita it's a showdown for all of glory against number 10 memphis to get to this point memphis knocked off kentucky and notre dame long hours in the coach's office blood sweat tears over years and years of hard work it's all led to this moment memphis tigers wichita state shockers in the 2032 college football playoffs national championship bring out the shocks 40 plus years without wichita state football and we are about to make the city in kansas 
proud. Up 7-0 on the Tigers here. They're going with a jet touch to the running back. He's stuffed, and we're going to get that ball back. Wow, okay, I can tell this team's super aggressive here. Another fourth down. They got it this time. Paid off for them, but now it's our turn to respond here in the red zone. Going to bring Augustine straight across, get some defenders in motion here. We'll scramble out to the right, see what opens up. We got options, and we'll keep it in front. Instead, we're forced to resort to this three-point attempt here in the biggest stage. But if you just keep pounding the stone and believing as Ted Lasso's instilled in the team, surely our time will come just like this connection to Wade, 17-7. If there's one thing you can say about Memphis, their offense is always electric. And that defense was good coverage. This game has been as advertised, I would say, going into the corner for long. What a catch. What a touchdown. Yo, he got up and got long. Tight end, snagged it. Battling out here with so much on the line, all of it right here. Our Heisman quarterback has been sure-handed, guiding us every step of the way. Calm, cool, collected, just a few adjectives that describe him. Never rattled, never phased, just taking the sure thing and making magic happen. Hate to be that guy, but it's time we officially go ahead and end Memphis's dreams of a national championship. I'm talking about 38 to 14. What y'all talking about? This offense has no other choice but to go for it on fourth down, so I don't blame them for trying they do get this one our coaching staff would expect the same out of us you don't stop playing till the final whistle and they're getting some fourth down conversions by no means were they out of it now within 10 i think they are just out of it now three more points and it's a 13 point game but it'll stay at 10 fourth and 12 hoping for a miracle it's going to be deflected and that's going to be game let's go shocker nation wichita kansas is on the map one man could save him it was ted lasso and he did everything in his power to motivate, to believe, to recruit the right guys in pieces to turn a defunct team, a team that was costing the school too much money, into a school that is victorious and on top of the world. This team's legit, built for years to come. Memphis fans came so close, heartbroken in the end. Our Heisman quarterback, number zero, was the man. I could go down the whole list on this roster and give everyone accolades and kudos because they all deserve it. A sure-fired offense, one of the best I've played with. And now that you've seen it, witnessed it here first, soak it up with King Sponge. Subscribe for more College Football 25 Team Builder excellence for all of the freshest bangers keep it here